This is brought to you by Glenite Construction, located at 1601 East 18th Street in the Lincoln Building. What's up, Kansas City? I'm Serenity, and today we have Nick Gavecci, the founder of Nick Poets. Tell us a little about yourself, Nick, and the group that you're with. <laughs> um, well, I'm a Lawrence native. Uh, Nick didn't start in, in Lawrence, but I'm def I definitely brought it back here just because I have a lot of hometown love. Um, but Neek is a, Neek is a spoken word poetry showcase. It's, uh, for those of you out there who are actually familiar with what slam is, I mean, you may not be, but for those of you who are, slam is a very interesting, um, it's a game, really. It's, I once heard somebody describe it as if spoken word is the art form, then slam is the bar game. And really, it's, it's good in... It's good in its own right. Um, what ultimately happens when you go to a slam is you see two types of people. Um, audience aside, you see the group of poets that have a stage voice, that have done it for quite some time. Um, and then you also see a group of poets who don't have a voice yet, but they would like to. Um, so in the sense that iron sharpens iron, when these poets who don't have a stage presence yet come in, they figure out what works. Um, and competition is very good at doing that because with any slam, the judges are picked at random, um, and you never know who you're going to be performing to. So being able to, I guess, for lack of a better term, play chess with the audience and know which pieces out of your diverse array of poetry that you have would work best for those people, um, you can pull those out, and that's where that's where slam is actually very good in developing the performer. Um, but I created Neek because of what ultimately seems to happen when certain poets develop that presence but realize that competition is not for them. Um, there are poets that love the nature of the gladiator game right. and they would like to go on to semifinals and go on to nationals and it's a beautiful art form and once you get up there there's fantastic names that have done this for quite some time and they know the they know the politics of playing the game and it gets them where they want to go and they're very happy um, but there are other poets that feel like their art has been um, I guess degraded because they never come in the, the upper echelon um, so what Neek set out to do is when slams happen um, slams happen monthly right. and we set Neek up so that Neek would happen quarterly. So for every three slams that happen, we ultimately sit in the audience, we watch to see who gets better, um, who develops that performance, who de develops that delivery, and who can connect their message to the hearts and minds of the audience. Right. And when we see those people, when we see that they've grown there, rather than letting them plateau and become disillusioned with the fact that they never get the subjective vote from the audience to get that first place ranking, we look to see who's second, third, fourth, fifth, and consistently coming in second, third, fourth, fifth. Um, so then we ultimately pull them at the end of the quarter, uh, the three months, and we say, listen, there's a showcase for you. Um, you've obviously proven that you have all of the talent needed to compete in SLAM. So Neek, for lack of a better definition, is a showcase of a SLAM. Um, we take the people who are very good at what they do, um, but for one reason or another haven't won yet, but want to continue down the road of just the performance without the competition, and we put them in to that environment where they can now reach out and connect with the audience right. without the time constraint, without the, um, uh, without the time constraint, without the scoring, without any of the subjectivity, so they can reach as many people as necessary um, and not have to worry about that. So ultimately that ties in and makes Kansas City a very wonderful place to be at this point in time. Um, slam, we're not taking anything away from it. Slam is still going to be there the way it's always been. It's getting better than it's ever been. Um, we, the community is unified. Everyone who's in Pound Slam um, and the Poetic Underground community grows together and now they have a choice. Rather than saying, all right, I've got everything I can out of SLAM, goodbye to poetry forever, um, we can say, all right, if you want to be on the national team, you can definitely uh, play for the win. 
Um, if you don't want to be on the national team, good on you. There's also this as well. And since Neek has been working tirelessly in the, uh, in the, within the Lawrence and Kansas City community, we're now plugged into the public school system. So we're going to be actually doing a show coming up at the, the high school in Lawrence this week. Um, and we'll be performing for the kids and inspiring a new generation to come up and do what we do. Um, but then again, those who don't want to compete don't have to. And they can get cycled back through and become the, fa the new faces of Neek. And then they would get cycled back through the public school system as well. So it, it's become a very diverse and flourishing community. And it's actually beautiful to see it happen. So who are the poets that are involved with Neek Poets right now? The Neek Poets are, are actually, it's, it's fun to say that because um, a Neek Poet isn't any specific type of poet. The poets that I've picked are people who don't necessarily have the same type of delivery. Some of them have the same message. They, like, there's always going to be certain things that you talk about. There's always going to be racial inequality that many different people talk about, or um, transgender inequality, or any kind of oppression, or anybody who feels oppressed that they can talk about. But the collection that I've picked um, consists of uh, Chris the Toaster Selby, uh, myself, uh, King Dose, Tyler Early, who was by Mr. Early, um, Sire Louis Freeman, uh, whose real name is Eric Maldonado, uh, Emery Dirks, Ruby Morrison, um, and Thomas Panzarello, who actually is based out of New York, and he comes down whenever he can, but they're all fantastic in what they do, in the sense that we have, we have a balance for every poet that we have. Right. So, where Mr. Early would be the emotional um, appeal to geopolitics, uh, Sire Freeman would be the, uh, the more logical shaving the fat off of the sides and really getting to the heart of the issue. Um, so they balance each other out as yin and yang. Uh, Toaster would be the more logical, like he's more performance oriented like I am. Um, so for everything that I don't do in terms of fact checking um, and just do in terms of just emotional and performance, he does in terms of reading and finding out all of the research that's been done on that subject and really diving into the details. So Neek is a series of very powerful poets that also have a very powerful potential to do incredible team pieces, which is something that I would like to see more of any slam poets who are watching, any poets who are watching, do more team pieces. Because <laughs> ego is not a thing that you should ever play with. Um, or at least if you do play with it, balance it out with something else. So I definitely lean on, uh, I lean on my poets to definitely mesh their voices together, um, which is fantastic to do that. And Dose in himself is phenomenal. Like, if yeah, you guys he haven't is. heard of Dose, definitely check him out. Um, he has his fan page. Uh, it's K, yeah. 117? Dose 117. Uh -huh. um, he's a very, very powerful, performance-oriented, message-oriented, um, based in rap and hip-hop, highly entertaining human being. Um, it's insane. Just to, actually, any you listen to any of us, it's insane what comes out of some of these poets' minds. So right. So you're here by way of I know you've moved around a lot. So you've been in New York, right. Lawrence, like right. I um I originally came out of Lawrence. I mean, I was born and raised there. Uh, I was, uh, one semester of KU, and within the parameters of what I was looking for for uh, performance and writing and just entertainment in general. KU didn't necessarily, actually any college that I looked into, it didn't necessarily focus on the performance side of it, and if they did, it would be further on in the curriculum, and I just, I have ADD, self-diagnosed, I guess, <laughs> um, but I didn't want to sit around and have somebody else tell me how to be me. Like, it's just a weird, it, it's really weird to have somebody tell you that your emotions aren't valid enough to be presented, and in a way, I guess that's its own systematic oppression. Um, but I decided to leave, and I spent a little while in Los Angeles, um, got what I needed out of there, went to Oakland for a while, um, came back to Kansas City, then went to, to Buffalo, New York, um, spent a little bit of time just kind of transient, roaming around. Um, and ultimately, I got beat down a lot in the last 13 years just by experiences. But with all of those tools that I gathered, I came back and created a cohesive, um, spo like spoken word is where all of these experiences breed, like that hard knock life mm -hmm. is very much prominent right here in what we do. 
So I collected a bunch of people that from all walks of life and all different ethnicities have that, uh, have that same kind of story and same emotional connection to equality and unity and community. So I brought it back because, like I said, I love Lawrence. So I have a whole lot of love for this community. And on top of all that, I take a lot of my drive and my initiative straight out of the playbook that Strange Music laid out. I was, I was born and raised here. I was here when Strange Music started. I was listening to tech from day one. Mm -hmm. And just that independent drive where he's made the largest, most lucrative independent label out of what he's done right in our backyard. Right. Um, I figured that there's, if he could do that for himself after being told that he was almost worthless and weird and he created something that his fans would figuratively die for. Um, spoken word can do the same thing. And where he, they've touched on every genre of music that's, I think, humanly possible. Um, I haven't heard any tech and bluegrass, but I'm sure that's coming. <laughs> um, but I've heard, and he's touched on spoken word. And I know he's done a couple things, like with Casey Pope Camille, who I've never met personally. Or, um, I've heard of her. Yeah, yeah. Heard of her, absolutely. Um, and that was a really, that was a fantastic just one track on all sixes and sevens and he even had an excerpt in the, uh, in the track Clusterfuck, which was outstanding, like right at the end. But outside of those two examples, I don't know that I've ever heard any other spoken word. And to be able to put our diversity out there and create that name for ourselves and have you guys even have us on this show means that we're doing something worth being out there for. Um, so ultimately, one of my goals, if anyone from Strange Music is listening, I want to work <laughs> with you. I really do. Um, and we have, like, we have the voices that we can put, put into that. Like, we have people that translate to rap, so we right. can put people with their rappers, and conversely, they could take their enlightened tracks, like anyone from Sescrew to Chris Calico, and right. flip that back, and we could do spoken word pieces with them where they can get message out there so that rap doesn't have this overlying umbrella that it's all ignorance mm -hmm. and right. because it's not like you it's listen true. if not. you yeah, you pull away from the the beat and the just the drowning out of what you hear in the clubs they really have something important to say they come from the same grime and grit that any one of us come from and they found an outlet to do it in so unifying that i mean i've seen strange music do music overseas with mm -hmm. the, any, everything from denmark to iran and um i would i would love to put this in there too and create just a huge cohesive movement where nationally people just see Kansas City and Lawrence and just uh, Northeast Kansas and Northwest Missouri as a mecca. I mean, I, I know it's been called that before, specifically by uh, Strange, but I, like just a mecca of art and create that place where anybody can go and anyone can feel accepted without being told that by a couple tenths of a point, they're not worthy of a title. Right. So. so you're doing a TED Talk. Um, how did that come about? I am. As um, TED, for those of you who don't know, it's a TEDx. TEDx is the, X signifies an independent, um, independent project. But still, TED is, TED started out in California. It was a four-day event, and in the last 20, 20 or 25 years that they've been around, They've created such a global name for themselves that even to use the name TED, even in relation with TEDx, right. is you have to go through strict licensing and mm -hmm. you have to have a message and they give you a certain time frame. So like anybody else, I had to apply. Um, but based on work in the community, they definitely push that forward. And I'll be doing a talk uh, based on the poem that I'll perform for you in just a moment um, called Canvas, The Formation of Identity. Um, and uh, it's going to be at the Topeka Civic Center, and in, obviously Topeka. Um, and when they sell tickets, they announce it on their website. And if I know anything about it, I will definitely put it up on my Facebook, which you you can all get a hold of me there. So, um, yeah. So how would somebody get hold hold of you? Like tell us your actual. Besides oh, besides Facebook, I do most everything on Facebook. So if you don't have Facebook, you're probably going to miss like ninety percent of my life. But there are other poets, they have other forms of social media. Realistically, for those of you who are in the Kansas City, Lawrence area, or can get to that area uh, pretty easily, we are always at the Uptown Arts Bar, Wednesday nights. 
the first Wednesday of the month is the actual Pound Slam. Um, you can come out and you can compete as long as you're one of the first 10 people there. Myself and my co-host Toaster, who I would be absolutely lost without. Toaster, if you're watching, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but you can come out there, you can sign up as long as you're one of the first 10 people. The list drops at 9. Myself and Toaster will be there. You can talk to us there. Um, other than that, there's an open mic every second, third, and fourth Wednesday, same place, Uptown Arts Bar at 3611 Broadway, um, which is half a block away from the Uptown Theater. Um, so you can meet us there. You can follow any one of us on social media. My own page is public. You can look me up. My name is Nick Kavecchi, um, as Serenity said. I'm going to uh, spell it out for him. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can guess. Guess how to spell my last <laughs> name. Um, my last name is G-I-V-E-C-H-I. I'm the only Nick Gavecci out there, and if you see any other Nick Gavecci's, the face that looks like this is the one that's me. <laughs> um, but the other, most of my other artists that on the team have their own fan pages. You can follow Chris the Toaster, um, Dose117, Sire Louis Freeman. Uh, Sire is C-I-R-E-L-U-E-Y. Um, and you can follow his work there. He posts a lot of his own free rights. Um, and we all primarily just put out our own work. So you can see little excerpts of what we do and it's none of the uh, it's none of the FML I'm buying shoes, the gaps out of khakis <laughs> garbage. We actually put up uh, legitimate material. So Facebook doesn't have to suck guys. Um, we're out there to make your lives a little better since we're all looking at our smartphones. We try and make you a little smarter. Or at least we try to pretend like we're a little smarter. Well, thank you for coming in. Sure. And I'm Serenity reminding you to spit your peace. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.